Hi, this is Jeannie from So You Think You Can Write, a podcast. For this episode, I'll be having my uh, co-host here, Bacon. So I literally have done this video several times because um, he seems to interrupt a lot of times. It's really been annoying, right, Bacon? Look at the camera, buddy. Look, you're in camera. You're famous. Anyway, so for my... For this episode of So You Think You Can Write, I'll be interviewing an author, and she's doing this full time, and her name is Samantha A. Cole. She has a really interesting life, and she sent me, me her bio, and um, I'm just going to read her bio. She's a USA Today best-selling author and a retired police officer and paramedic, and she writes romance suspense uh, books. And her popular Trident Security series has spawned four spin-off series, T.S. Omega, Dawns of the Covenant, um, Dymos, I, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, and Black Hawk Security. The Malone Brothers and Hazard Falls, a series, they're not related to each other, but for some reason their characters will cross over and make an appearance, right? And Samantha also has a few standalone novels and is involved in several multi-author projects. So it's really, really interesting. Um, and um, it's really nice of her to be uh, interviewed by someone like me that's just starting out. But, you know, they're very humble so far, the authors that I've interviewed, and they're really just here to help. And hopefully you'll learn a lot from this as well. And uh, Bacon, where are you facing, honey? And I'll be playing the interview. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so okay. I apologize for the confusion. Um, um, I didn't know if I sent the, the wrong, like if it was an AM instead of a PM. But yeah, so I apologize yeah. about this morning. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Yeah. Uh, as my, all right, I'm going to take those off because I really don't need to read anything <laughs> in order to say. Thank you very much for doing this. Um, you're oh, no problem. No problem. Author that I've interviewed. It's really been interesting. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I read your bio. It's really interesting. And uh, my name is Jen, by the way, and this is my co-host, Bacon. Okay, and this is my co-host. This is Boomer. Oh. Boomer, has, Boomer has been with me for uh, just about three weeks now. Oh. So, um, He's still getting used to everything. Bella is being shy. She's downstairs. She's oh. my other dog. Is but, he a Maltese? Uh, no, he is a Havanese Shih Tzu. Oh. So he's only about 14 pounds. Oh. Yes. He's, he's, a, he's been a little zoned out all day because he went to the doctor th this morning and he doesn't do well there, we found out. Uh -huh. So he ended up getting a sedative. So he's been kind of stoned all day, right? Yeah. So all right, I'm going to put you down. Okay. Yeah. You have a friend, Bacon, look. That was your friend. Oh, <laughs> he wants to join me, and he's been interrupting, so I'll just let him join, you know? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, I'm going to get stared at now, now that I put him down. <laughs> let him down. Well, I don't have much room here. Otherwise, I would, <laughs> I'm in my desk chair, so... Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Go lay down. Okay. So we're good. Oh yeah. So thank you very much for responding. So I'm recording this. So um, I'll I'll send this on the podcast, and uh, I have a YouTube page as well. And I'm like, yeah. Um, after okay. this, you can send me all the links that you want me to send, and I'll I'll send that and stuff. Hopefully, um, um, I'll just continue to also um, announce this like podcast so that more aspiring authors can hear so yeah. yeah so i read your bio very interesting but i want you to tell me about you because it's really interesting oh god um uh, yeah i came into writing at a late age i was okay five years ago so i was 48 when i published my first book mm -hmm. um before that i was a police officer and before that i was a paramedic so I have a lot of um, background to fall onto when I'm writing my suspense portions of my novels. And uh, 
a few things that have happened in my careers have made it into the books. Uh -huh. um, the names have been changed to protect the innocent and the stupid. Um, but <laughs> it, uh, it's been a lot of fun. You know, it's, it's definitely the third best career I've had in my life. You know, I, they, I loved each and every one of those careers. So. Wow. That's amazing. I think my first author, um, uh, Mr. Inman, he started writing when he was in his fifties actually. So yeah. Oh. He started well, that's where I am now. So. And the second writer, uh, uh, Mr. Angel, he was like a, he was a lawyer and he went into like technology and then this, he started uh, writing fantasy novels, you know, so yeah. <laughs> very interesting. I, I got into a bad car accident when I was working um, in the police department and long story short, I ended up needing four knee surgeries and one neck surgery. Oh, wow. And during my one of my knee surgeries um, in the aftermath, I was laying on the couch with my leg up in the air and bored silly. I had read God knows how many books at that point. I was reading 14, 15 books a month. Wow. And uh, so I just didn't have anything on my Kindle at the moment that was hitting me. And I tried to start writing. Mm -hmm. I said, I have all these stories in my head and let me give this a shot. So this was back in 2011. And uh, back then, indie author, being an indie author was in its infancy. There were people that were just starting to figure it out. Nobody knew what was working, what was not working. Um, it really took off in, in 2012 and 2013. So when I did this, these first two and a half books, I gave it to my friends and family and said, you know, tell me what to think. Worst mistake of my life. Um, nobody wanted to tell me how, the storylines were good. I've, I've even published two of those books after I rewrote them. But I was doing every author don't. Um, I had run on sentences. I had two people talking in the same paragraph. I was head hopping. I had dialogue tags everywhere. Um, and it just, it was a mess. And nobody wanted to tell me how bad it was. So after two and a half, to, books I pulled the plug and I said I can't do this I don't know what the hell I'm doing and I left it for four years and I didn't write again for four years and then uh, spring of 2015 um, I had these six guys that Navy SEALs that would not get out of my head and one of them Devin kind of took over and said okay here's my story here's how I met Kristen and you're gonna go write it and I'm like no I'm not because I can't write for squat. And he basically told me that he wasn't going to leave me alone until I wrote his story. Wow. So I went back from walking the dogs one day and I said, okay, the only way to shut him up is to put the words down. I wrote 85,000 words in one week. Wow. I don't think I can never do that again. <laughs> the only reason it happened was because I had the entire, almost the entire story written in my head by the time I sat down. Wow. I had all these scenes already going, so it was just a matter of throwing it all down on paper. Um, and I, instead of giving it to my friends and family, I went online, and this time I found Goodreads, and I found uh, a site that's no longer up. It's called World Literary Cafe. Mm -hmm. And um, I found out I needed beta readers. And through a beta reader, I was hooked up with an indie author, um, who had two books out at the time, but she already knew a lot of the ins and outs. And she hooked me up with other authors. And uh, Katrina and I spoke probably every day for a year and a half. Wow. And I owe my entire career to her. So Katrina Courtney, um, she's got two, maybe three books out right now. Um, she went back to school, but she is going to start writing again. I did talk to her not too long ago. And uh, she is going to start writing again, but I owe so much to her because she really, she saved me from getting involved with, with, a, uh, with a vanity press and losing the rights to my book. Um, she taught me how to market. She taught me, you know, she showed me what websites to go to and what programs to use because I couldn't afford an editor at the time. And 
she basically told me everything. And if she didn't know it, she found somebody who did know the answer to my question. And, and, um, and that's why now I love paying it forward to newer authors. Ah. Because I've learned so much over the past five years. Um, there's still plenty I don't know. Do not ask me how to do Facebook ads or Amazon ads because I hire somebody to do that because, ah. yeah, I, I signed up for a statistic course in college one, one, when I was going to college. And that same day, first day of class, I walked out and dropped the class because I had no idea what they were talking about. So anything that has to do with statistics and tweaking advertising markets and stuff like that, yeah, I'm just going to hire somebody to do that because I don't have the time to learn it. And yeah, <laughs> but I do love to pay it forward to, every, to, to new world authors and just because I hate to see them fall into the traps that either A, I made or the ones that I barely kept from making. Mm. And so it's, it's been a lot of fun. It, I, and I've met so many great people through this. I have friends around the world now, and that's not something many people can say. But between social media and, and my books, I have people I talk to around the world now. Yeah, that's the nice thing about social media and ha having joining Facebook groups where I found you. It's just like you literally have the world in your fingertips, like at your fingertips. Like, and Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I, I, even just for research, um, I had uh, one book took place, uh, part of the book took place in the Philippines. Oh. And um, so I did a lot of research there. And then uh, one of my readers... One of my readers is from the Philippines, so I, I picked her brain for some stuff. Um, I, have a, uh, I have a character now that's from Australia. So a couple of my, um, my long-term readers, my long-time readers, um, helped me out with some dialogue the other day and, you know, what words he would use, what words he wouldn't use, phrases and stuff like that. So it would be more authentic. Um, and that's not stuff you could do 10 years ago, you know, yeah. it's just, well, maybe 10 years ago, but not 15 years ago. I mean, you'd actually have to know somebody down there or go down there and do your research. Now everything's right at your fingertips, like you said, and I can research anything in a matter of minutes and it, it no longer takes months and months and months to research for a book yeah oh speaking about months and months and months like um what is your like do you do the um rapid release because you mentioned before 80 you were able to do eighty-five thousand words in like a week. yeah <laughs> i'm sure <laughs> my my goal is to be releasing every four to six weeks wow yeah. But um, yeah, that's not going to happen yet because uh, I just moved not too long ago. My mom is living with me now. Um, and it's just a lot of things get um, interfere with the writing process. And I'm trying to correct that. And I'm trying to shut down social media for a few hours a day and just write. And I can... I can get books out in three weeks. I, I, can, I can write a, a full novel in three weeks. Um, it's just now I spend so much time on social media. I spend a lot of time on marketing. I spend a lot of time researching how to market, stuff like that. And um, you know, now I'm, I'm getting into Instagram because Instagram is like, there's a huge, uh, market out there for readers on Instagram that don't use Facebook. So oh. now I got to learn. And I mean, and there's millions of people that don't read face uh, that, that don't use Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. They're not on. So you have to figure out all these places to market and how to get your books out there 
and, uh, and into libraries and into audiobooks. So there's so much to do and it takes time away from your reading, from your writing. So trying to find that, that balance between actually sitting and writing the book and then getting the book out to the readers. It, it's, it's difficult to find sometimes. So uh, sometimes I've had books where my characters are just talking to me and boom, 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 let's go. And Brian Malone from my Malone Brothers series, he's book three. He has been fighting me tooth and nail about his happily ever after for a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to strangle him. Um, he just, he'll start talking to me for a little bit and then he'll stop talking to me. And I know my readers are waiting for his book, but I can't force the book. I can't force the words because I will not be happy with it and my readers will not be happy with it if that happens. So I just ask them to please be patient and here's a, here's a book from another series. <laughs> so I'm gonna get to it sooner or later. But um, yeah, that, that's my goal is to be releasing every four to six weeks and I wanna get about six months ahead of my releases. Wow. So what I'm releasing in October is already sitting here, ready to go, already uploaded. The cover is there. It's been edited. It's, it's ready to go. And that's my goal. That's Don't know if that's going to happen, but that's my goal. <laughs> that's really inspiring. Yeah. That's amazing though. Um, so are you, uh, I think you're- I'm getting a kick out of the way he's standing there looking at you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> No, he wants to get it, it looks very funny on the on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I imagine because you have like um, you already have those characters in your head. So are you a plotter or a pantser or are you both? You know. I I am a bit of both. Um. My thing is I do not plot on paper. My the most of my plotting on paper is I open up um, a new document, and I'll write the outline of a scene or uh, a little bit of dialogue that took place back and forth just so I don't forget it. And then I'll, that's off to the side until I'm ready for that book. Um, most of the plotting goes on in my head. Mm. But as I write, things pop up. Um, prime example uh, is uh, A Dead Man's Pulse. It's um, the first book in a spin-off series from my original Trident Security series. And the scene was at uh, Arlington National Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And this uh, Marine had lost almost his, his entire team. And he's there visiting their graves. And he's kneeling at the grave. And in my mind, as I'm writing that part, here comes this little kid walking up and he stops and he says, is he a hero? Because he's kneeling in front of one guy's grave. And little Charlie took over this scene and then he ended up being in the, in the end of the book too. But it was such a pivotal scene in the book, never had a clue that Charlie was walking in here. And if you ask, most of my readers, they will tell you that scene was their favorite scene in the entire book. Wow, that's amazing. And <laughs> I had no idea Charlie was coming in. He just walked up in the middle of the, of the scene as I was writing it. So yeah, a lot, of, a lot of what I write is just pantsing. It just pops into my head and here we go. Let's start. That's good. Maybe that's why you produce so fast because you're doing that uh, stream of consciousness writing, you know, it's just like flowing. Yep. Well, and, and I, I float from book to book. I'll, I'll start walking my dogs and I'm on one book and then a character from another book is like, oh, hi, by the way, let me tell you this, this scene that we're going to put in the book. And, you know, next thing I know, I, I, I'm talking to somebody, well, in my head, I'm talking to a character that has nothing to do with the book that I'm working on. So now I got to come up and write a little blurb so I don't forget what he just told me and then go back to the other book. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So it is, it is fun. I think that's how musicians um, 
create, like I heard some musicians do that. They hear a tune in their head and then they record it and then they like score it. And then later down the road, they like create the song. So I think that's a creative process, I guess. Yeah. Before I started writing, I had no clue that not everybody has these people in their head talking to them, talking to each other, and these scenes playing out in their head like they're watching an unwritten book or movie. Uh -huh. I, I just assumed everybody thought like this. Mm. Never came up in conversation, so I never thought anything different. And, uh, and I found out that no, most people don't. So writers, um, I forget who said it? Possibly Hemingway. I'm not quite sure, but somebody said that writers are insane. And it's true. We are technically insane because we have, we hear voices, you know, and it's completely different. And I told my mom this one time, one time, uh, about a year, about a year ago. And I said, you have to understand what my brain is like 90% of the day. It's these characters talking to each other, talking to me. And my brain is acting like a movie screen or a TV screen and I'm watching this scene play out. And I said, this is my brain 90% of the day. I said, what do you think about all day? And she goes, well, now you know why I worry so much because I got nothing like that going on in my head. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> so it, it is it, very hard to explain for somebody who does not experience that to understand what's going on in, in an author's brain mm -hmm. like that, or, or like I said, any artist, um, you know, a, 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 an actual artist, sculptor, painter, whatever, they have stuff going on in their brain. Photographers, they, they see what they want, you know, they, that, what, what image they're trying to capture and they go and do it. And, People that, you know, actors, they have their own things going around in their brain. So this is what's going on in my brain. Yeah, I think you're a very right-sided um, brain person, like yes. right-sided brain, because you don't like the, the math, the math, like the statistics, and you don't like the other side of it, yeah, the business side. I, I, I don't mind math <laughs> until it gets up until, yeah, I never took cal calculus or above. So... I didn't mind math up until that point, but after that, yeah. Yeah. I will not be an Einstein. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that's most um, creative people. They use their right side of the brain. So that's why it's kind of hard to shift as well, you know? And I think that, but you're doing this full time. So I'm sure you can somehow shift to the left side, which is marketing, you yeah. know? And um, so Going that- Back and forth, yeah. Yeah, because some people are just creative and they just don't know how to do the marketing side, which is mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, talking about marketing, so you always, uh, your new releases, um, so you have a very, I looked at your list, like a long backlist. Yes, so uh, I just finished writing my 33rd book. Um, it actually will not be out until later in this, uh, the summer because mm -hmm. I want, it's, uh, the prequel to a new series mm -hmm. and I want to complete book one. So there's only like a three week wait for the readers because mm -hmm. it just, it stops. There's a cliffhanger. I don't want people freaking out that there's a cliffhanger and that it's going to be months before they see the book. So, um, yeah, so I just finished the, the 33rd book. And uh, it just, it, it still amazes me, still amazes me that I have gone this far. You mm -hmm. know, when, when I just wanted to write a book and get these idiots out of my head, one book, 33 books later, and still going. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So you also have like a mailing list that you have your own like... Uh people that you market to or how does like the, the newsletter yeah 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 there's uh i have a newsletter that goes out every time i do a new release if there's mm -hmm. a sale um i just opened up my uh my world i have um over 60 end up to write barring my characters 
So I opened up the suspenseful seduction world and they're borrowing uh, my characters from my Trident Security series and they're using them in their books. So it's kind of fun seeing what other authors do with my characters. Ah. And it's definitely different. Um, I've done it for Susan Stoker's world. I've written two books for her world. And it's just a lot of fun because you, you know, you find characters you fall in love with that mm -hmm. are written by somebody else. And you're like, I would love for this guy from my series to get, to, you know, have a run in with this guy over here. And it's a lot of fun writing with somebody else's characters. So I was so happy when so many authors signed up to write in my world. Uh, we have nine of the books out already. I think we have five more coming out uh, in May. Mm -hmm. And I think we have uh, 10 or 12 coming out in June. Wow. So we're, yeah, doing, doing very well. And, and the readers have loved them. So that's been great. And it gives, um, those authors a chance to find new readers among my readers ah. and it also gives me a chance to find have their readers come find me ah. because they're like oh i like this character oh that's samantha's character let me go check out her book so it, it's a win-win for for both that's amazing yeah that's the first time i've heard of that because usually people collaborate but they have like different stories in an anthology or something like that. Uh, so well, it's like this started, this started out, uh, Amazon started it. Uh, they called Kindle Worlds back then. Uh -huh. And about two years ago, they decided to drop the program. Uh -huh. So I had already written in Susan Soka's world and the authors who's, who's, who own the worlds had the option of, um, started you know continuing their own world on their own or just telling the authors who wrote in their worlds that they had to take their characters out oh. and just replace them with, with something else so um, a lot of the a lot of the authors uh continued their world some didn't um because it is a lot of work and it i don't know why kindle dropped uh, amazon dropped it because it really was a great program, for, especially for new authors. Mm -hmm. um, it gave them access to so many readers that they may not have found, uh, you know, just doing their regular marketing and trying to get their books out there. So it, it is a great program. So I, I encourage any author, especially newer authors, that if you know an author whose books you enjoy and they have a world, you should look into writing for it yeah. because it exposes you to all of their readers. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a nice idea, but um, yeah, I don't know why Amazon did that. Maybe it has to do with copyright issues. I don't know, or licensing. I don't know how that works, but well, yeah. it has, it has to go through their books. I publish their books. Their wow. books come through me to publish my books with Susan. She, she publishes those books. I get my percentage, she gets her percentage, and that's how the copyright is covered, is because you're in a contract. Uh -huh. And if you leave the world, uh, most of the contracts I think now are, are three years, mine is three years. So if an author writes for me and they decide they want to leave the world after three years, all they have to do is take my characters out and replace them uh -huh. with, some other character. Oh, okay. So it's really, I mean, it's really not a hard thing to do. Um, uh, you just rename the business, rename the character, and boom, you're ready to go. Oh, okay. That's nice. That's really something new. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what can you say to aspiring authors, you know, especially like authors like me, I'm still starting out, I'm still learning the ropes. Um, how can you like, what message do you have for people like me? Uh, <laughs> especially me, I have like- the, the two biggest messages I have are, don't give up, mm -hmm. keep plugging. Um, when I, when I, 20, in 2015, when I started doing all the research and, and, and getting my books out there, most of the articles I read at the time, and it still 
pretty relevant today is that most indie authors will not start developing a following until after their fourth or fifth book. Wow. And I was right on target with that. My fifth book was, was the one that started taking off for me and really getting out there to, and I had more and more people joining my, my group, signing up for my newsletter, uh, reviews, my sales went up. So yeah, just get that first book out there and start marketing it, but start writing your second book, your third book, your fourth book, and keep going because you're not going to get that following with just one or two books. There is very, very, very few indie authors that have had a breakout book before their fifth book. Oh, that's good to hear. Thank you. Yep. My other thing that I tell uh, new authors is leave your egos at the door. Um, there are so many authors that came before you that 90% of us want to see every author succeed. And we will help you. We will give you advice if you ask for it. We may even give you advice if, if you're kind of hemming and hawing. But don't, I, I've had other authors, newer authors that, oh, people don't understand me. They don't understand my work. They, uh, you know, you write in a different genre. And, it, you know, and, and, you know, they act like they're writing the next great American novel. <laughs> None of us are. Uh, there, yeah, there's only one Hemingway. Never going to happen again. So I tell authors to leave your ego at the door. Listen to the people that came before you. Not everything that they tell you is going to work for you. However, it gives you things to look at from another point of view mm -hmm. and say, okay, well, yeah, maybe my editor didn't do a great job. And, you know, well, that's what happens when you pay them, you know, 50 bucks to edit your book. You know, we've all been there. We've all made a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. And we know people that have made, other authors that have made a lot of mistakes. So we want to tell you what pitfalls to look for and how to avoid them. And some, some newer authors out there and even some more experienced authors who have 15, 20 books out and they still can't figure out why they don't have a huge following is because they don't want to listen to the people that came before them or the people that are finding their success. Ah. And yeah, egos do not have a place in the book world. And I've seen people tank their careers because of their egos. So definitely leave those at the door. Yeah. Speaking of Hemingway, I heard Hemingway, I heard he was a bad typist and a bad speller, but he hired a good editor. Uh huh. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, you know, so as a writer, I guess, so, you know, just you're right. Leave your ego. You're not like perfect. Even Hemingway. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, <laughs> I, I've been in groups where people will post something looking for advice, but then they start arguing with the advice that you're giving them. And it's like, I've done this before. I've seen people do this before. Listen to what I'm telling you. It's not written in stone, but don't toss aside what I'm trying to explain to you. Think about it. See if it applies to you. And if it does, great. If it doesn't, move on. But there are just some people that they, they want you to tell them exactly how to do it. And then they don't want to do it. So definitely egos are a problem for some people. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was just listening to an audiobook by Chris Fox. So he talks about that too, that he thought he had like, oh, he was great. He made his first book, but then he realized he got his first negative review. Uh huh. And then like, oh, now how do you deal with it? And but he, <laughs> he, he said, just listen to whatever the people are saying because that like that means yes. something. You can yes. So well, how when, when when I first when my first four books came out, I did not have an editor. I was relying on. Um, Pro Writing Aid and, um, and words, uh, grammar, spell checker, and my beta readers. 
and the occasional reader that said, hey, I found a typo. I said, great, let me go check, let me go fix it. And um, so when I did finally hire an editor, she was like, are you sure you didn't have these edited before? And I'm like, um, no, <laughs> <laughs> this is months of, of fixing the typos and, and the errors and stuff like that. But uh, I did take a lot of my reviews in those in the in the early days where people were saying, you know, okay, she's head hopping all over the place. Well, what the hell is head hopping? I'm like, okay, let me go back and fix this. I thought I fixed it everything. So taking the, that criticism and getting past the fact that it is negative criticism and using it to improve your writing is definitely something you need to do. And if you do get um, negative reviews and you're really getting depressed over those negative reviews, go to your favorite author's books and read their one stars. You will feel so much better by the time you're done reading them, <laughs> trust me. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Definitely go read, read your favorite author's one star reviews and you will, you will get over your one stars very, a lot easier. Yeah. Okay. That's a good, that's a good advice. Yeah. And um, I think based on the, um, you know, the interviews that, that I've had so far, uh, you guys that you that are doing this full time, you guys are really friendly and not standoffish, you know? Oh, no, please. I, uh, yeah, I, like I said, 90% of us want other authors to succeed. You know, there are some people out there that see other authors at the, as their competition. We're not each other's competition. We're not. We want to see everybody have success. Um, I will give you advice anytime you ask me for it. I just will not write your book for you. I've had people ask me to basically to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's not happening. I'm writing my own books. Um, but yeah, we're, I, one of the, the best things I love about being an author uh -huh. is going to book signings and meeting my readers. Oh. I've had readers come up to me and just hug me. I've had readers cry on me before. They've gotten me crying. Um, I, you know, laughing with them. We go out and, and have drinks and, and stuff at the parties afterwards and meeting all my readers from around the world is just like the biggest kick for me. Mm -hmm. Because it, my words have brought us together. Mm -hmm. And that just kind of blows me away. To, to this day, it still blows me away. And it, I'll probably be on my 150th book and saying, yep, I'm still getting blown away. That's so yeah. it'll, it'll never get old. It'll never get old. I, I posted not too long ago, about two, three weeks ago, um, somebody posted a review. I think it was in my group, in my reader group. And she just loved one of the books and, and she was gushing and stuff like that. And I took a screenshot of it and I put it on my wall and I said, getting readers contacting you like this never gets old. And so many authors commented on it saying, yep, it does not get old. These are, these are the best, it, they make my day when my readers contact me. They mm -hmm. totally make my day. That's great. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. What one of the uh, back in uh, in 2015, um, I was three books in, three books into my Trident Security series, and my younger cousin was uh, losing her battle with with lung cancer, mm -hmm. and I wrote um, Not Negotiable, which is a novella in that series. And the, uh, the female character had cancer for the second time and uh, she was going through the chemo and everything and it became therapy for me. Mm -hmm. And that's all I thought about. Uh, my, my, cat, my readers wanted uh, Shelby's story from the beginning. She had been a side character and it just became therapy for me. And I finished the book about two, three weeks before Ginger passed away. And I didn't think anything of it beyond that it was the next book in my, my series and whatever. I started getting emails and direct messages and posts in my group and on my wall and of all these cancer survivors or 
family members of uh, those who went through cancer either losing their battle or, or, or surviving it. And I had tears in my eyes reading some of these emails. And some of these people are still my longtime readers ever since then. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you got it right. You got our fears. You got, you know, our, our joys when, when we got that, that, that time that, you know, we, um, we found out that we were in full remission and, and they're like, you got all of that right. And I'm like, well, I went through with, with my cousin and I said, and I lost my dad after five years of, of uh, fighting four different cancers. So getting that response from readers is just amazing. Mm -hmm. It made me feel so much better about my loss, about, you know, that, you know, she fought the good fight. My dad fought the good fight and it helped me heal mm -hmm. just by hearing their stories. And just, I, they still tell me, oh, I, you know, somebody I know got diagnosed. I gave him your book. I'm like, <laughs> it's amazing that my words can touch people like that. And, uh, and yeah, that I still, I still cry anytime somebody writes to me about, about that book. Oh, yeah. Because I think everybody's been like, that's a disease that has touched everybody's lives. I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone has a, a family member, like my mom, she died of cancer as well. So everybody can relate. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, we, in my family, we, we lost, um, we lost my dad, my aunt, and my cousin to cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, I've recently connected. I was adopted at six months. And if you anybody followed me last year, um, I did Ancestry.com and uh, did my DNA and found out uh, that I have two sisters and a brother. And my, my biological father is still alive. He knew nothing about me. And we've connected. Wow. And I finally, for the first time in my life, I found out I have a medical history. Wow. So I now know that my, my, my biological father survived a heart attack and one of my sisters survived uh, breast cancer. Hmm. So I said, oh my God, for the first time in 52 years, I have a medical history. So that's kind of, you know. So, you, so your mother was... Um you didn't grow up with a father or like, uh, or no, no, I, I was adopted. My, my parents adopted me at six months ah, old. Ah. Oh. And, uh, yeah, um, I still have not, uh, reached out to my biological mother yet, but I know who she is. Ah. And, uh, just a lot of things going on there that I'm, I'm not sure I want to step into at the moment, <laughs> but, um, but my, my, my biological father and his wife, uh, have been phenomenal and they live down in Florida. They come up uh, and we're, um, I'm about 50 minutes away from, from my, uh, my sisters and my brother. Wow. So that's amazing. Yeah. So I have this whole new family that I'm getting. And one of my sisters, I get something to kick out of this. Um, she was laid off of work the past couple of weeks oh. and she has been binge reading all my books. Oh, wow, that's nice. And she sends me a message, I'm done, send me more. <laughs> that's nice. So it, it's really, it's been a, a kick the past couple of weeks having her, having her uh, binge read everything. That's nice. And finally, uh, family, because you mentioned that you sent your first book to your family and friends, they didn't really appreciate it. Finally, you find No, no, they, they did appreciate it. They oh. didn't want to tell me that my writing was horrible. Oh. I didn't want to hurt my feelings. Oh. <laughs> and the, the storylines were good. I've since released those books, but nobody wanted to tell me that my, my writing actually sucked. I was doing everything that I shouldn't be doing. Oh. And uh, so, yeah, that's all been corrected. <laughs> now you have a new fan. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, but um, no, my, my, mom, my mom knows she's only allowed to read certain books of mine. Oh. Um, I, I, she's not allowed to read this, some of the senior stuff. And, uh, and my aunts, they've all been very, very supportive. You know, they get, a, 
They know that I would rather them not read my books because it, it's hard enough having my mom read some of my books with, with the sex in it. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to skip over that part. <laughs> Just because she knows I wrote it. She, anybody else wrote the book, she wouldn't skip over it. Because I wrote it, she's got to skip over it. Um. <laughs> so. That's funny. <laughs> but yeah, they've been, they've been very, very supportive. It's just, you know, I tell new authors, you can let your family and friends read your books, but let them read it after you've had it edited, published. You got a bunch of reviews on it that are positive. Yeah, then, okay, here, read my book. <laughs> Don't let them read it because then they're not going to want to hurt your feelings if there's something wrong with it. Um. So let them read it after it's completely done, it's edited, it's, it's already out there, go for it. Yeah, I'm lucky because uh, my family hasn't read it, so because they're not interested in reading it, so I'm like, okay. <laughs> I, I had that problem too. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people I was friends with aren't readers and uh, they don't understand this whole world I'm now in. Mm -hmm. And I did lose a few friends over it wow. because they just, um, you know, I was no longer available to go out and party and, and babysit their kids and run an errand and, you know, do go shopping and stuff like that. I'm like, I've got to work. This is my income now. And I work 14 hour days, almost seven days a week, either writing or marketing. Yeah, and that is um, a business. Some people it is. understand that uh, self-publishing is a business. Yep, and they don't understand that at all. And they're like, well, you're, you're you know, Samantha is, is my pen name. And they're like, well, you're on, on social media on your, on your pen name all the time and you, you I'm like, well, A, it's a pain in the neck to go back and forth. B, you guys aren't saying anything exciting over here <laughs> on, on, this, on this Facebook. So, but uh, I, I did just get a kick out of, um, I just got the Galaxy uh, Note mm -hmm. 10 5G. Mm -hmm. I'm, I can get two um, messengers up and two Facebooks up. It lets me put a second account up. So now all I have to do is, is click and I'm over. I don't have to log out, log back in, go back and forth. I have them both on my screen and I can see which, who's talking on what. So it's a little easier now. Yeah. But back then it, it's, yeah. I, and I know a lot of authors, a lot of authors have said this too, that they lost um, friends and, and some family members because they just don't understand that this is a business. You know, yes, I'm writing for fun because I love it. It's a fun thing to do, but this is what's paying my bills. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I retired from the police department after my, my accident and uh, I just, this is what's paying my bills now. Mm -hmm. So if they don't understand it, that's their problem at this point. Yeah, it's a job mm -hmm. and it's a business. It's a job in a business. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much though. Um, it's been really informative and um, I'm really glad you're like nice in person because when you <laughs> former cop police officer, I'm like, oh no, uh oh. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> so, matter of fact, if I lean this way, back there, is my graduation picture somewhere uh -huh. and uh, with, with all the other ones. And the one that is, okay, let me figure up there, that one, uh -huh. that is a picture of my grandfather standing next to his patrol car. He was NYPD, oh. he was a sergeant. And uh, my aunt had made this collage up with, with the picture. So it's got his shield up there and I think it's got a whistle and other stuff. It's kind of cool. But uh, yeah, so my grandfather, my, uh, my uncle, my cousin, and then I found out that my biological dad was a police officer in NYPD for a couple of years before he switched over to the, the uh, fire department. 
Wow. So it kind of runs in the family. Huh? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, definitely nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> as long as you're not breaking the law, we're good. <laughs> yeah, especially with uh, over speeding and stuff. Right, Bacon? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'll be um, sending you, I'll post this by next week. Okay. Uh, usually I post on a Wednesday and I'll send you all the links and send me the links that you want me to link to. Okay. So, um, the people on my YouTube and uh, um, the. I, I, have a, I have a media packet I can, I can send you. And yeah. you can pick and choose whatever you need. Yeah. And I'll just uh, also uh, post your bio and stuff like that. Okay. That's and, all in there. Yep. Yeah. And also send you the interviews from the past two weeks and stuff. They were really cool. Like, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. We'd love to see them. <laughs> okay. And thank you very much. And thank uh, you for having me. Yeah. And who knows, maybe in the next couple months, I might interview you again because it's been nice. I, I, I like talking to you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. I would love to do it again. Yeah. Anytime. Thank you very much for your help. And yeah, say, uh, welcome. Uh, bye to Boomer and what's the oh. other? <laughs> no. Yeah, he's sound asleep at my feet right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, you have a good night. Thank you again for having me. Thank you very much for bye having bye. me. Okay, bye bye. So we're back and thank you very much for watching. If you're on YouTube and listening, if you're um, listening to this on iTunes and Spreaker, and Bacon is back as well. So for next week, I'll be interviewing um, an editor and she'll be explaining the different types of editing. And look at that, Bacon's very satisfied. Are you very satisfied, buddy? Yeah, he is. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think he'll always be my co-host. Otherwise, he'll just interrupt. Yeah, he looks, he looks cute. But you look cute, buddy. Anyway, and thank you very much to Ms. Samantha A. Cole for doing the interview. And I really learned a lot. Uh, I learned that you can be from a different profession and then just follow your, um, your dreams uh, to be a writer. And she has a different writing process because she actually hears the characters in her mind. And that's really interesting. Um, as for me, it's more like uh, I get snaps and images and just impressions and stuff like that. But it would be cool though if my characters start talking to me that would really make my life or my job easier and uh, who doesn't want to write 80,000 words in a week right bacon yeah but with my full-time job and taking care of bacon as you can see um, it is a full-time job just taking care of bacon um, and also doing my full-time job as well as writing at night and writing on the weekends it's really really uh, very challenging, but hopefully I'll be able to transition to just working in my day job part-time and working in my um, writing or on my books full-time. Right, Bacon? Yeah, that's the dream, but um, I don't want to give up my day job just yet because I actually enjoy what I do. Okay, and uh, thank you very much for watching and, uh, and or listening. And bye-bye.